how different Camino will be this year. Are you ready to deep dive into the most important aspects of the Camino? How much time do I need? How much money will I spend? Where should I stay? And other 12 different categories? Yep, this is the Camino Guide to Accommodations, Budgeting, Route Selection and Transformative Journeys. Pretty much everything you need to know so you don't end up surprised like a cat with a cucumber. And we Camino Teles. Eric and Ricky. Eric and Ricky. And we've not only been walking Camino de Santiago for many years, but we also helped more than 130,000 people who watched our previous guides and walked the Camino. And so far, no casualties, right? No, no casualties so far. But as the Camino is becoming busier every year, there are some adjustments and hacks to be done. So let's talk about the Camino in theory and in practice. Yep. And this is a shell, which is not only a secret sign for more than 500,000 people, but in the simplest way can show us what the Camino de Santiago is. The center of this shell is Santiago de Compostela. For more than 1,000 years ago, the remains of St. James were found, and since then, people from all the parts of the world travel to visit this magical place. Guess who? Yep, kings, queens, famous scientists, actors, religious heads, you and me, because we're also important. And people walk for many different reasons, some seeking spiritual pardon, others to reset their lives, immerse in European culture, save a unique food experience, and this could be surprising for you that these lines on the shell that taken you to the unifying point, which is Santiago de Compostela, are the paths, are the Caminos de Santiago, which is not only one, but there are actually many. Which Camino should I choose? Erika? There is the famous French route, starting from France and crossing the whole Spain. This is the most famous one and favorite for many. Beautiful landmarks and transformative places are some of the highlights of this route. There is one starting in Portugal, meeting two different cultures. Amazing food and the hospitality of Portuguese people are the highlights of this one. And then there is one that goes along the coast of Spain, Camino del Norte, which is where the sequel of the way is taking place. Here you can probably appreciate the best views. And then there is one that crosses the mountain, the primitive way where nature meets tradition. This is still an undiscovered path on the Camino map. and 15 other ones. In general, whichever Camino you choose depends on how much time you have, for how many days you can escape from work or from your partner. Because there is no fixed starting point on the Camino, you can literally start from anywhere. If you have a week, like most working folks, choose the French route from Saria, Portuguese from Tui, or Camino Ingles from Ferrol. And by walking the last 100 kilometers, you're eligible to actually receive the certificate of Camino de Santiago called Compostela, okay? That requires you to actually collect at least two stamps on the pilgrim's credential, which could be like this, or like this, or like this. And if you still don't have credential, worry not, you can pick them up probably from everywhere, starting from albergues, hotels, and also the churches along the way. And you know what's funny? Because all the stamps that you pick up along the way, then when you come back, you look at them and you remember beautiful stories. For example, like this one with the star that we got in this albergue in San Anton, Albergue without electricity. But anyway, we're going to talk about albergues later on. If you are using all your future holidays and manage to get two weeks, choose the French way from Astorga or Leon, Portuguese way from Porto, or Primitive way from Oviedo. If you are blessed with at least a month of time, meaning you simply retire, you can walk the entire Camino, whichever you choose. The French way of 780 kilometers, Camino del Norte of 824 or Camino Portuguese from Lisbon with, with 630 kilometers. 
or even the Via de Plata with more than a thousand. And if you still don't know which Camino to choose, just above there will be a link where you can check which are the main Caminos, all the pros and cons, and you can make the informed decision of best Camino just for you. Comment in the comment below when is your Camino and when you're walking. Connect with other pilgrims walking on the same date. And now let's talk about weather. Once you've chosen your Camino, consider choosing the right month because the weather is a main factor on the Camino because you probably have to prepare gear-wise, equipment-wise for any type of conditions like rain, heat, or any other ones. So let me explain in less than a minute how is the weather look like on the Camino, right? And this is the Camino with the guide. March. Goretex. April. May. No Goretex. June. July and August. <laughs> September. With or without Goretex. October. Cortex or hiking boots. November till February. And this is Camino Weather Guide. This is the overview, but the exact packing list, the clothes and essentials and gears that you need for your Camino, we will touch upon in the last part of this video. Is it time for the push ups? Once you know what you're up for, whether you're walking 800 kilometers or 100 kilometers, you can start the appropriate preparation. A complete approach includes gradually incorporating different forms of training, especially walking. Once you develop that habit or love for walking, your preparation will be painless and stress-free joy instead of a tight and unbearable routine. Consider including strength training, flexibility exercises, cardio workout, just to make sure that you are physically prepared for the Camino challenges. After you establish a good base of training each week, add a backpack and extend the duration of your walks. But no rush, there's no need to overdo it because it's really hard to walk Camino with an injury. Preparation for Camino will help you prevent a lot of problems that every pilgrim can face on Camino, from blisters to a poorly adjusted backpack, so make the best out of it. <laughs> Many people overlook the mental preparation, which could be writing down your experience, sharing your feelings and motivations to others, and simply facing those days in which you don't feel like walking with a smile. But the most important thing is just show up. Take that one step and the rest will follow. And now let's talk about accommodation. So how do I plan for the Camino? How does it work? Should I sleep on the street or should I sleep in the hotel? Yep, let's first talk about four different types of accommodations. There are four different options of accommodation, starting with hotels, the most luxury, the most comfort. You know what you're paying for. There could be beautiful breakfast in the morning. There could be a nice and comfortable king-size bed. There can be sometimes the jacuzzi. All depends on your pocket. And let me be clear about it. Sometimes it's actually necessary because after one month of walking, it's nice to find your own bed and just to lay down like that. Sometimes it gives you this extra motivation for the next day to walk. And the good night's sleep, when you're sharing with thousands of people, uh, it's necessary. 
The second type of accommodations are the private albergues. That means that little places with a shared accommodation with a bit of a less luxury than in hotels. You can probably still gonna get your blankets, you're still gonna get your nice cotton sheets. And in many of them, they do also the community meals. You can pre-reserve it calling on any other booking site, but you still have to pay a little bit of money for that. And if you compare it to the third option of accommodations, which are the municipal albergues, you will see the difference in the price because mainly, Municipal albergues are made for everyone. That means that that cost from five to 10 euros, but they offer a pretty spot and condition. That means a bed and a pillow and some really basic sheets. In many of those albergues, you can find the kitchen so you can cook your things with the pilgrims that you meet on the way. And the fourth type of accommodations are the parochial albergues that belong to the church or to the Indian associations and they all donation-based facilities. What does it mean? Donation-based doesn't mean free. That means that after getting there, after having the dinner and the breakfast in the morning and a good night's sleep, you will have to give whatever you have and whatever you feel comfortable with. But there is one golden rule. Whatever you eat in those places, this is cause of other pilgrims who left the money the night before. So that's how they keep the chain of the gratitude and love towards the Camino and towards others. The conditions in the parochial albergues and donation-based albergues, there are not a luxury conditions, but the atmosphere in those ones is just marvelous. And there are also few albergues, like the one in San Anton, which did not have electricity and let me tell you one thing, we had the best night on the Camino in that albergues. So should you book your accommodation up front? How does it work? All depends of how do you want to have your Camino done, what type of person and pilgrim you are and what type of experience you want to have. Many of those places like the municipal albergues and the parochial albergues, you cannot book. You can only book those ones that are private or hotels. And we have a present for you. It's a pretty peculiar present because this is something that can enhance your transformative power of Camino de Santiago. The future me letter. Just on our website, there is a part, you say future me letter, when you can write yourself the letter and receive it once you get to Santiago. Think about it. Sometimes it's difficult to see the progress, the transformation, the change within you. If you write it down today, if you pour down all what you feel today, what are your expectations, what are your intentions, how would you like to feel on the Camino, and why you're actually doing the Camino, when you write down the reasons, and then the day you arrive to Santiago, you receive this letter by mail, that can be a really big discovery. This is absolutely for free. This is something that following the idea of giving, we've tried to implement on the Camino de Santiago, our little gift for you. In order to find your way on Camino, you don't need to be Indiana Jones or Einstein, because Camino is well marked by thousands of arrows, shells, indications, at every corner, like a game to play, just follow the signs. And whenever you feel lost, an arrow will appear. Nowadays, you don't even need guidebook, GPS or apps. There are some people who use GPS systems, but it's not really necessary. And many people who walk Camino will tell you the same. Guidebooks can be useful when you need to decide which variant to take, but even that, after all, it's a matter of intuition. And the first piece of equipment I would take with me would be shoes. Yep, and the shoes are probably the most important part of the equipment. We did the poll about it and the results were shocking. Shoes are probably the one piece of the equipment that you shouldn't save your money on. You should go for the best possible shoes for you. And which one to choose? 
There is a big misconception that Camino de Santiago is a hiking and you need to put your hiking boots on. Yep, hiking boots are really good for hiking and for mountain. Camino de Santiago is different. It passes through different terrains. It passes through agricultural lands, it passes through the cities, pavements, roads, asphalted roads, as well as a bit of the hills and cobblestones road. And we strongly recommend trail running shoes. And these are the new shoes of Erica that she got the other day. And as you can see, the main characteristic of the trail running shoes is this part which can amortiquate uh, your feet and your body for a long, long distance walking. For example, the shoes that we've been using, I've been using for the past year, which then did more than 2,500 kilometers, as you can see on the bottom, are equipped with the cushion, equipped with those one or two centimeters that will be a blessing, but at the same time, they are not rigid. So they appropriate for any type of terrain. There is the guide about which one, which shoes to choose. We're gonna put it just over there. So have a look and make the correct decision. And now the time for the second part of equipment that surely you will need. And the second most important part of your equipment are the socks. This can prevent any blisters that you might have on the Camino. The hiking socks stick perfectly to your feet that prevent excessive rush. There are a few different fabrics and materials, but we strongly recommend merino wool, which absorbs all the unnecessary flavors and smells that you can imagine, also regulates the temperature of your feet. And one important thing, if you do your Camino in summer, there are special hiking merino wool socks made for running, much thinner, and this could be really good options for you. By the way, there are a few different brands. There is, as you can see, those ones, the toes ones in Gingy, there is a Smart Wool, there's a Dantro. They are pretty much pretty good. So get yourself at least two pairs and try them before your Camino. And the third important equipment that you shouldn't save your money on, it's the backpack. But not the brand itself, because there are many good brands on the market. Osprey, Daughter, Gregory, Z packs, but the rather the way they are done and they proper a correct measure because the backpack should be fitted to your torso size. The torso length that's the part that goes from the lumbar part until this one sticking bone which is here, and that's how you're choosing the correct uh, size of the back. Otherwise, you're gonna suffer as simple as that, because the weight of the body is not going to be correctly distributed along the body, but rather in the few parts, especially on the shoulders. If your backpack does not have a waist belt, it's not a good backpack, because 70% of the weight stays here, and only 20 here. There is also a difference between a man bag and the female bag, because they all form a different type of the body. And there is one item without which Camino de Santiago in its transformational aspect wouldn't be as possible. And this is the journey within Camino de Santiago journal. Number one journal for the Camino de Santiago. It's done for pilgrims, from pilgrims, from us, because after many years of walking, we observed something really interesting. There are many stages on the Camino de Santiago, many parts of the Camino de Santiago that sometimes require explanation or sometimes need to be enhanced, like meseta, like the first day, like arriving to Santiago, like finishing and integrating the part of Camino into your new you. You can use it before the Camino de Santiago in your pre-preparation, and that means intention settings or working about your expectations, as well during Camino with the subjects like effort, loneliness, or trust. This has a daily devotions. This one's, for example, the self-care explains you how to integrate this aspect into your day-to-day -day life and take care of yourself in many different levels. On the side, you will find a way to write it down. Many pilgrims love it and hopefully you're gonna love it too. 
You can find it in any library all over the world. And you can even have it delivered to your home, your best Camino friend. And talking about money, how much money should I take? Can I withdraw money from everywhere? And how much things are actually are costing on the Camino? We made a poll about it with three different options. And the first one, the people who were on the budget, around 35 euros a day. And there are a few tips that you can actually use. First of all, cook for yourself cook for yourself and even invite others to eat with you and split the cost of the food at in the same time and make a lot of good friends. You will probably sleep in the municipal albergues on donation-based albergues and obviously buy your food in supermarkets because the prices that you can find in the shops along the trail can be a bit higher. The second group of people opted for the budget of 35 euro plus. That means that sometimes you can have a community dinner, uh, which could be from 12 to 15 euros for three calls meal. During the day, you can have a picnic or you can choose the menu del dia, which is like a pilgrim's menu during the day which is obviously much cheaper than buying a la carte. And if the expenses aren't a concern for you, you're pretty much blessed, so enjoy. And how much money should you take? Take some money with you, because in many places, especially donation based albergues and the smaller villages, they won't accept the card payments. And that would be pity not to use them because you don't have any change with you. The other thing is not to take too much because once you'll be walking, you'll be worrying about losing it or getting it stolen. And that's not the point of Camino de Santiago. There are a few banks and a few credit card providers that won't charge you fortune when withdrawing your money once you're abroad. So if you know some, put it in the comments. We're going to leave also a few links to some of them in the description. A question might appear. Is it actually safe to walk the Camino with money? So guys, this is me again with police. No, this is not the end of the Camino. This is just a, a part of police, especially prepared for the Camino and for pilgrims. So if you have any problems, if you find yourself in trouble, and if you do absolutely anything, all you have to do, you have to call 112. That's the international number. You can choose it. You can on, on your phone, wherever you're from, and they will come and they will help. And maybe even have a coffee with them. Cool guys, eh? Camino de Santiago, it's a safe place and you can walk it on your own. Look at the graphs. Many people decide to do it on their own. But it's always advisable to be mindful about whatever can happen at the Camino. This, for example, is a bum bag, funny bag, some people call it. And this is the place little thing that you can put your passports, your credentials, your money, or even your Camino journal. And keep it always with you, wherever you go. If it's the bathroom, if it's the little thing, just take it with you and you'll be nice and safe. The other aspect of the Camino is the community watch. That means that although you're walking on your own, you're never alone because there is always someone there for you. A helping hand, a person that can help you in any kind of circumstances that can happen. There is also the dedicated police for the Camino de Santiago. There is an application only for the Camino de Santiago. And there is also the phone that you can call anytime that you're in trouble. You can also use your iPhone and simply send the SOS message that you're in trouble in any moment that you are. The other possibilities of the dangers are the injuries. Because the Camino de Santiago, it's a really long walk. We receive hundreds of mails daily from pilgrims that had problems on the Camino de Santiago, had to go to the hospital or had to stop the journeys. And one of the things that mentioned that the health insurance saved them a lot of hassle and a lot of money. Choose your insurance. Maybe your card provider can offer you a travel insurance. And if you don't have any, in the description, you will find the one that we're using on our journeys. Another thing is that you can always get the Spanish cards and you can allow you not only to call albergues, but also 
to call any security services, any police or anything else. So order it online, get it delivered to you before you actually come to Camino, the Spanish prepaid cards. And then once you're in Spain, you can use it without any problem. The most important piece of advice that we can give you is when you arrive to Camino, whichever starting point it is, just stop, take two days off. Don't rush into walking, still immersed into your daily problems, maybe even with a jet lag. Relax. Take a morning coffee with the locals. Write down your intentions, your feelings. Feel the vibe. Soak into the new rhythm, a totally new rhythm. So how does the typical day look like on Camino? It depends. It's not one size fits all solutions for everyone. People on the Camino usually wake up early because it gets really hot in the summer and in the fall it starts getting dark earlier. Some wake up at 5, some at 6. Don't be surprised if you develop a new morning routine on the Camino. After the morning coffee, we walk for a few hours. We like to take it slow and, and if there is something to see, spend there some extra time. If there is a coffee to take, and share the story with others, we will be there. Around the midday, you can have lunch at the bar and enjoy a picnic. And afterwards, you might continue walking for some time more, depending on how far you're planning to go that day. When you arrive to Alberga, wash your clothes, share laughs and stories with people, have a dinner and go to sleep like a good boy or girl. And then you repeat it the next day. One thing that we've learned over the years is not to be too hard on ourselves. If your body needs more sleep one day, let it be. Another really important information is that the water is drinkable in Spain. That means that with many fountains, when it's otherwise not stated, you can drink from the tap. The same, you can go to the bar, you can ask the people to fill the water bottle for you and it's generally safe. So a part of water, you will like to fill out all your electrolytes and all your minerals every time you finish a really long day. Do some extra stretching and take care of the body. If you feel like preparing for Camino with a group of like-minded people, join our pre-Camino support calls. We are holding group Zoom calls in which we touch upon many aspects of Camino, from the preparation to integrating the lessons of Camino. You will also access a private group in which we motivate each other, encourage with fitness challenges, but also we plan together for this Camino. And we build this family of Camino enthusiasts. Something that drove me personally to the Camino was a promise of the deep transformational experience. And we know that Camino de Santiago has a religious tradition of the Christian pilgrimage. Nowadays, as you can see in the statistics, as you can hear from many people, you don't have to be Christian to walk the Camino, but you have to be prepared that Camino will touch the inner part of you that sometimes you not might be aware of. Off. And this is the beautiful moment, this is the beautiful experience of rediscovering who you are. It's not just a normal journey, not all inclusive holidays. It's a journey that can allow you to get to know yourself better. We invite you to cherish the silence. We invite you to fuse with the nature. We invite you to connect to the spirit of the Camino of giving, sharing. You can disconnect from your problems. You can first of all disconnect your phone. You can leave your problems at home and you can think about your life from the different perspective. So once you finish the Camino, once you walk the Camino, you can readjust to the life with a new reality. And sometimes it's life changing. Yep, all that we said here so far, it's pretty much important. But let's be clear, without one thing, all the preparation does not make much sense. The preparation of your backpack, packing list, clothes and accessories, which you can all find in this video here.